It was just a triangle. I'm not sure if that's all they had time to put on or, or if that's um, what their plan was. Ryan Hicks was walking into work Thursday morning when he first noticed this triangle spray painted on the brick wall of Central Arkansas Finance. It was a little bothersome. I mean, it's only a triangle. It's not the end of the world. But, you know, at the same time, you know, we don't want this happening again and again. And he used this pot to cover it up temporarily, right. walked across the street and spent 50 bucks to buy some paint and a brush. We're going to fix that as soon as, you know, we get a clear day to, to paint. We're going to paint right over it and take care of it. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, you can still you can barely see some right there, but it said turn up when I was all the way to the back. Ethan King showed us some of the damage left behind from last week's vandalism. I was getting ready to go to work and I thought it was a joke at first. His car was parked in front of his house in this quiet Conway neighborhood when vandals tagged it last week. Someone had spray painted the words turn up. I was pretty mad because I didn't think it would come off just as easy as it did. So I thought I'd be driving around town with spray paint all over my car. I was not happy. Neither were two other car owners who woke up to similar damage. Even this police car hit by vandals who graffitied the driver's side doors with a triangle and a dot in the middle with the letters FTR and the words till I die. It's probably just some crazy kids just going out thinking that's fun. I mean, you probably there's not really much you can do, but just try to protect your vehicles and all your stuff as much as you can. Is not a video game but a tool to keep Central Arkansas families safe. This week, the Yellow County Sheriff's Office got the Milo Range Simulator. This is a um, scenario-based, audio-visual-based training system. It is used to teach deputies what to do during active shooter situations, and even those threatening to commit suicide. Put it down. You don't want to do this. This is a system that they've used at the police academy for years and other systems similar to it. And um, it, it's the one piece of training that I've always heard officers talk about they wish they could have done more of. Deputies say the program cost about $17,000. And with this program, they'll be able to teach other agencies as well. There are over 500 scenarios, actual video scenarios on the system already, plus about 50 of the skill building exercises. And every year they do updates of about 40 to 50 scenarios. Instructors are even able to replay each deputy session and how well he or she responded. You can stop it at that point and, and talk about it and, or you know, move on to the next one. But deputies hope this training will never be used with real weapons and real victims. Yolanda Simmons and her daughter Tamara Coleman it just seemed like a very a nightmare are in disbelief. In June, they dealt with the death of their grandson and nephew, one year old Joseph Johnson Jr. Yeah, we all love him. We miss him and we're still dealing with this tragedy. This week, another shock. People are calling my brother a baby killer. Police arrested Joseph Johnson Sr., accusing him of killing his own son and namesake. I know in my heart that my brother is not no murderer. You know what I mean? He loved that baby. Detectives say Johnson placed his baby in a scalding hot bath inside this home. The boy died more than two weeks later from second and third degree burns on nearly half his body. The coroner called those injuries intentional. Yolanda, the coroner says that he doesn't believe this was an accident. Explain why you think your son is innocent. I, I believe in my heart that my son, it was an accident because he never bathed his son and he was not properly, you know, trained to how to bath him and stuff. Family members say little Joseph was born prematurely with immune system issues. That's why you see him with a tube in these photos. The boy's grandma says he needed an oxygen tank to survive and that the baby's illness could have also contributed to his death, a death she's certain her son is not responsible for. I want to let the world know that Joseph Johnson loved his son and would never do nothing intentionally to to kill him or hurt him. Oh, it's forever on my mind. Mayor Joe Smith says he attended 31-year-old Samantha Olson's funeral in August. He says it was devastating, so emotional, it brought him to tears. Why this case? Why is this case so important to you? Well, I take every murder in our city personal. Uh, this particular case, um, the, the young lady was approximately my daughter's age. The murder shocked many people. Police say someone randomly shot Olson at JFK and McCain in broad daylight with her baby daughter in the back seat.
It's very important that that uh, our police department gives 110 percent, which we do on, on every case. And uh, this particular case is a little bit more interesting and uh, a little bit more difficult. With very little evidence, the mayor says he wants to help the police department in whatever way he can. Approving overtime and giving permission to travel out of the city if it will help. Whatever the chief needed that I was going to give him the, uh, the wherewithal to to spend the money to find uh, the murderer. Mayor Smith says the victim could have been anyone. And uh, my grandchildren are in and out of that uh, intersection uh, four or five times a day. And to ensure this doesn't happen again, he's willing to do what's necessary to track down the killer, giving closure not only to the family, but also to his city. In North Little Rock, Melissa Schroeder, Fox 16 News.